Hello, I am Seamus Dunahoo of Eve University, and this is my walkthrough for the Sisters of Eve Level 1 Epic Arc, The Bloodstained Stars. This is the prologue episode. Uh, this is the Creus release version. Today is Friday, August the 8th, 2014. Uh, checking my standings real quick. Naval Most. Um, I am using the same character that I used to film the Creus version of How to Survive Eve Online. Uh, I completed the advanced military chain and therefore the last of the tutorial chains on August 5th and it has been three days since then and I have been training skills ever since. Uh, the purpose of this prologue episode is to cover what ship fittings I am using, what skills I trained in the meantime. So first let me talk about my skills. Uh, I have a full skill training queue here. Uh, I have 327,000 skill points, still covered by a clone alpha, and I suppose I should check, go through the rest of my checklist. I have no new mails. Uh, do I have any new notifications? No. And just as in the, for the sake of getting into the habit of this, I am checking whether or not I'm at war. I'm in an NPC corporation. I can't possibly be at, at war with anybody. But it's a good habit to get into, if you're going to spend most of your time in high security space, at any rate. If you're going to live primarily in low security, null security, or wormhole space, you do not care about war declarations. People can shoot at you without Concord intervention anyway. Alright, so, regarding skills, uh, if you want to see a history of my skills... Uh, so, August 5th, I trained weapon upgrades. The history listing will only go back so many entries, and it will forget what you trained prior to that. Uh, so hopefully it hasn't forgotten too much. Uh, let's see. It's probably best if I go through these by category. Uh, so on the skills tab, one of the things we can do is click the gear icon and show all skills. So when you right click and you show uh, a window, you can see all of the skills that exist in that category. Pretty useful if you want to read up on all the skills that exist in EVE Online and plan ahead uh, in the long term what you want to do with your character. Uh, but to make this more readable, I will only show current skills and skills I can currently train. So let me open up all the various categories here. When you show, when you right-click a header and open the group window, you can merge that window with the with the other windows that you have here. Uh, so you can make them tabs of the same window. I like to do that with all of my skills. Uh, I'm rambling. My apologies. Only show current skills. Let's go through this one at a time. So I have hull upgrades. You saw that in How to Survive Eve Online. Five percent bonus to total armor hit points per skill level. Mechanics is 5% bonus to structure hit points per skill level. Uh, in addition, these skills are prerequisites for various other things. Uh, remote armor repair systems, I haven't really trained up very much. I'm currently doing a lot of solo work, so I don't intend to remote repair anyone. Uh, repair systems is for using modules that repair my own ship. Uh, so I have that trained up to level 2. That's a 5% reduction in repair systems duration per skill level. Uh, I've decided to get some drone skills, so I have drones, light drone operation, and drone avionics. The drone skill allows me to deploy one drone per skill level of the skill. You can only ever have five drones deployed at any given time maximum. There are exceptions for a rare expensive collector's ship called the Guardian Vexer, not to be confused with the Guardian or the Vexer. Uh, and there's also exceptions for carriers and supercarriers, which are capital vessels. You are not going to be flying them in less than one year from creating your character, I think. So you can only have five drones deployed at a time if you're any sort of subcapital vessel. 
Uh, right now I'm training towards I will I'm training towards level five. It's in my skill queue, but right now I can deploy four drones at a time. Light drone operation uh, is a prerequisite skill for being able to use the smallest of the combat drones. Uh, and I'll show you the drones in my drone bay. But I have this trained up to level 3, so that gives me a 1.15 multiplier to the damage from light drones. Uh, drone avionics increases what is called the drone control range, which is kind of an invisible parameter for you. I really wish CCP would show this on the uh, fitting window or the character sheet somewhere, but hold on, maybe they do, maybe they don't, never mind. Alright, uh, but the drone control range is how far away you can tell your drones to attack things. By default, it's 20 kilometers plus 5 kilometers for every level of drone avionics plus 3 kilometers for every level of, what is it called, advanced drone avionics. So if you've got level 5 in drone avionics and level 5 in advanced drone avionics, you can tell your drones to attack things up to 60 kilometers away. Uh, that's just from skills alone. There's also There are also high slot modules called drone link augmenters, which I'm probably not going to use for this series. Uh, but each such high slot module will extend it by another 20 kilometers. Electronic systems, I still have just the propulsion jamming skill. 5% reduction to how much capacitor these types of modules use. I should probably train that another level. Under engineering, uh, capacitor management level 2, capacitor systems operation level 2. Uh, these increase the capacitor size and reduce the capacitor recharge time. Uh, CPU management uh, increases how much uh, central processing unit I have on my ship. That's one of my two fitting space constraints. So if I train more levels of CPU management, I get more teraflops to fit modules onto. Uh, uh, electronics upgrades is a prerequisite for certain things. Uh, if I remember correctly, we need this for the hacking skill. Uh, energy grid upgrades is a prerequisite for uh, capacitor, power relays, and cap rechargers. I'm not using them on this particular fit, though. Uh, power grid management gives me more megawatts, which is my other fitting space. Uh, weapon upgrades reduces the amount of uh, central processing unit that my guns and launchers require. Gunnery. Gunnery is the basically the root skill in this category. Uh, it gives a 2% bonus to uh, turret rate of fire. Uh, motion prediction gives you bonuses to your tracking speed. Rapid fire gives you bonuses to rate of fire, again. Sharpshooter gives you a bonus to your optimal range for, on your guns. Uh, again, I have small energy turret. I've also started training small projectile turret for reasons that I'll explain when I get to the fit. Missiles. Uh, this is a weapon another weapon system that I didn't explain. You'll probably be introduced to missiles if you've been running the Kaldari tutorials. Uh, but I got myself Missile Launcher Operation, Light Missiles, and Rockets. Uh, missile Launcher Operation Level 1 is required to inject the Rocket skill. Uh, level 2 is required to inject the Light Missile skill. I've decided to go with Rocket Launchers and Rockets on my ship. A word of warning when trying to train missiles. Uh, the Launcher only requires Missile Launcher Operation. But the Rockets or Light Missile ammunition charges themselves require separate skills. Rockets require the rocket skill, light missiles require the light missile skill. So, whereas with gunnery, all you needed was small energy turret for both the weapon and the frequency crystal, for missiles, you need a different skill for the launcher than for the ammunition. If all you have is missile launcher operation, you can fit the missile launchers fine, no problem. You cannot load them. So just be aware of that. Uh, but the light missiles or and the rocket skill increases the damage done uh, for their respective ammos, and the missile launcher operation skill increases your rate of fire. 
navigation i have injected acceleration control which increases the bonus the speed bonus from afterburners and micro warp drives uh, the afterburner skill i told you about uh i introduced you to in how to survive you online uh, but the bonuses here are that it reduces the cycle time and it reduces the capacitor use. So if for some reason you want to switch off your afterburner, you can do that sooner rather than later. And the afterburner uses less cap over time as well. The face of maneuvering reduces what is called my inertia modifier. The smaller your inertia modifier, the more quickly you change velocities. Smaller inertia modifiers are better. It is a multiplier to the ship's mass. Uh, and the time it takes your ship to align to warp from a dead stop is your ship's mass in kilotons times the inertia modifier times a constant 1.386. For those of you who are mathematically inclined, 1.386 is negative the lawn of one quarter. So phase of maneuvering lets me go into warp faster. It lets me change velocities more quickly. Uh, fuel conservation reduces the, af the capacitor needs of the afterburner. High speed maneuvering re reduces the capacitor needs of the micro warp drive. This, re uh, it, more specifically, it reduces the amount of capacitor per second that the micro warp drive has to eat while it's active. This has nothing whatsoever to do with the fact that the micro warp drive also reduces the total size of your capacitor just because it's online. So the high speed maneuvering skill will not help the capacitor size penalty on a micro warp drive. It just reduces how much of the remaining capacitor it eats. The navigation skill increases your subwarp ship velocity per skill level. Warp drive operation reduces the amount of capacitor required to travel any given number of astronomical units uh, at warp. Neural enhancement. I have not touched the cybernetic skill. Uh, implants are kind of expensive. Uh, so, for example, if I want to... Let's see. Implants and boosters, implants, attribute enhancers. Let's look at slot two for a moment. Uh, a, a plus one attribute enhancer is almost a million interstellar credits. A plus two is five million interstellar credits. And a plus three is more like 20 million interstellar credits. I've only got two, uh, about three million interstellar credits. Oh. I'll explain what I did with uh, my junk later, but um, three I only have three million interstellar credits. Implants are too expensive for this character, so I haven't done anything with the cybernetic skill, really. Production, I have not touched advanced industry, but if I trained levels in it, it would re reduce the um, manufacturing and research times required for my blueprints. Uh, Industry reduces manufacturing time. Mass production allows me to run multiple manufacturing jobs at once. I'm not going to be making use of this in the Bloodstained Stars. Resource processing, I haven't really done much with. Salvaging, reprocessing, and mining, I believe I introduced you to all three of these during How to Survive EVE Online. Uh, reprocessing, to go in a little more detail, uh, allows me to get more stuff out of something if I want to reprocess it into minerals or some such. Training completed. And I just finished training light missiles level 1. Scanning. I have not touched this very much. I have hacking, archaeology, astrometrics, and survey. Uh, we covered all of this in How to Survive EVE Online. Science. The science skill uh, I have not touched. Um, that's probably going to be part of a separate video. I won't be making use of it here. Uh, shields. Shield management I haven't touched since How to Survive EVE Online. I'm using an armor tanked ship. If I could call this a tank, really. But anyway. I'll explain what I mean by that later. Uh, but it's a 5% bonus to my shield hit points per skill level. Again, remember, for armor tanked ships, the shield layer is essentially an initial throwaway layer. 
Spaceship Command. I have two levels in Amar Destroyer, uh, which will be important for the Dragoon. Uh, I have Amar Frigate level 4, which doesn't help me since I'm not flying a frigate right now. Mining Frigate I'm not flying, of course, and Spaceship Command gives me an, a decrease to the Inertia modifier. So Spaceship Command and Evasive Maneuvering both help the agility of my ship. Target management is still at level 3. I haven't touched this. Uh, I have a ship that can support 6 targets on its electronics, so I should probably get target management level 4 at some point. I'm not playing the market a whole lot, so retail and trade I have not touched. So what I did with my leftover stuff uh, after filming How to Survive EVE Online, uh, I sold some of it in Depari, and some of the stuff I packed into the Magnate. My Magnate Frigate, the Frigate that you were given at the end of the Exploration Chain, uh, or the Frigate I was given at the Exploration Chain, uh, has a large cargo capacity, uh, about 500 cubic meters if I remember correctly, so I could shove a lot of my stuff in there. It didn't come out, it, it, it didn't add up to be a whole lot of ISK, Fortunately, otherwise I might have made myself a suicide gang target if anybody had bothered trying to cargo scan my ship. Uh, but I took it all that stuff to Amar four jumps away, and I started selling it there. Uh, the sigil industrials I just reprocessed into minerals because I'm playing on a trial account with this particular character, and trial accounts are not allowed to train any racial industrial skill. So I could not make use of the sigil for hauling purposes. So I simply reprocessed the two sigils that I received into minerals and sold off the minerals. By the way, uh, a word of warning about uh, selling stuff on the market. Uh, buy orders might not be located in the same station as you. However, the order can be placed, uh, can be given um, a range. So the buyer is willing to accept items from people uh, who are not in the same station as the buy order. So this uh, entry for Fusion S rounds for my projectile guns. Uh, somebody in Velour is willing to buy these things from anywhere in the region. Granted, the buyer is then responsible for transporting those, picking up and transporting those rounds. Uh, wherever they happen to be sold to him. So if I sell rounds to this buy order, he's going to have to come to Arnon to pick it up eventually. Uh, but anyway, uh, one of the things about buy orders is that they can also dictate a minimum volume. So this minimum volume is one, so he'll take any number of Fusion S. Let me see if I can find another example. Tritanium. So, this buy order for Tritanium is centered in Renin, and has a range of three jumps. Uh, that's not close enough for me to sell to it, I'm five jumps, I'm five jumps away. Uh, but additionally, the minimum volume is 1,000. What the buy order is saying is, do not waste my time if you do not have at least 1,000 units of Tritanium to sell to me. So that's kind of important. So when checking prices, when checking buy order prices on the market and seeing who's offering the most, if you can't take, if you cannot transport the stuff to wherever the buy order is located, uh, you cannot sell to that buy order. If the buy order has a range that reaches out to you or if the buy order is in the same station, even if, if it's for a really high price per unit, you want to remember the minimum volume. If you have a quantity less than the minimum volume, then f even if you're in range, that buy order may as well not exist. You cannot sell to it. So if I only had 900 Tritanium, I cannot sell to either of these two buy orders. This buy order, however, is fine. It's in range, and it has a minimum volume of one, or one unit. Keep in mind, the minimum volume is in terms of units. Of course, it is not in terms of cubic meters. But anyway, 
I sold my stuff in Amar 8 Oris. Uh, uh, yeah, Amar 8 Oris Emperor Family Academy. That's the second largest trade hub in all of EVE Online. Um, you know what? While I'm flapping my jaw, I want to create an instant on Doc Bookmark for the station because I'm going to be coming in and going out of the station all the time. Why I did not start this process earlier, I will never know. I'm veering a little off to the right for my taste. Let me try... there. Alright, that looks like it might be approximately correct. Yeah, this is a Kaldari trading station. Um, it's on Dock Vector is at an angle above the ecliptic plane. Most stations will undock either along one of the four cardinal directions, or straight up or straight down. Some stations will not, and a Kaldari training station is an example of that. So I'm going to hope I'm pointing in the correct direction. <clears throat> but anyway, I sold a lot of my stuff in Amar. Uh, and I wound up with about 5 million interstellar credits. I then bought this ship and its fittings. So let's talk about the ship itself, first of all. This is a Dragoon-class Amarian destroyer. Uh, for every level of the Amar destroyer bonus... Uh, I'm sorry, for every level of the Amar Destroyer skill, I get a 10% bonus to drone hit points and damage. And I get a 20% bonus to Energy Vampire, also known as Nosferatu, and Energy Neutralizer Transfer Range. Uh, I talked about Capacitor Warfare a little bit in How to Survive EVE Online, but I really didn't go into a whole lot of detail. Um... Basically, energy neutralizers will spend some of your capacitor energy to make more of the enemy's capacitor energy disappear. Energy vampires, on the other hand, uh, will steal some of the en enemy's capacitor and give it to you. The energy vampires, however, do operate under the limitation that the enemy has to have more gigajoules than you at a given moment. If you've got 5,000 gigajoules left in your capacitor and your enemy only has 200 gigajoules left in his capacitor, your Nosferatu will not steal gigajoules from him. So you cannot steal uh, capacitor energy from a target that has less capacitor than you. The one exception to this are uh, pirate faction ships uh, from the Blood Raiders, uh, such as the Balgorn battleship. I won't be talking about pirate faction ships further. Uh, suffice it to say that they have a bonus that allows them to use energy vampires all the time. So even if a Balgorn's target has far fewer gigajoules than the Balgorn, the Balgorn can still steal from it. Kind of reverse of Robin Hood. Uh, the Dragoon also has a 25% bonus to a drone's maximum traveling velocity. So if I launch my light drones and send them flying someplace uh, uh, to chase down targets, they'll get there uh, with 25% greater speed. Uh, this is primarily a drone damage ship. So my drone bay... I have three sets of drones here. The drone bay will hold 75 cubic meters of drones. Drones are essentially uh, flying turrets. So if I right click Hobgoblin and move drones to a new group, Light Thermal or Light Galente. Light Thermal because they do thermal damage. Uh, I can drag this folder out into space Let me hide my f windows here, and there are my drones. Four of them at any rate. I don't have drones five trained up yet. And my drones have shield, armor, and structure bars. And I can target lock something and tell my drones to attack that thing. And they will go fly off t 
and circle around that target in circles and orbit around that target in circles and shoot at it. And if I want to, I can tell the drones What the Oh, right, of course. I crossed a grid wall. That's why three of my drones disappeared. Uh, grids are a subject. Hold on, let me align. I can't align. Oh, right. Sorry, uh, you're seeing a phenomenon that's attributed to something called grid foo. Um, in player parlance, a grid is a volume of space where the game believes that uncloaked objects should be able to see each other on overview. Uh, the station is now too far away for me to see surrounding traffic on overview. So one moment while I get back closer to the station again. So yeah, because I left the grid because I was too far away, three of those, my three drones, uh, lost contact with me. Uh, if you're interested in the subject of grid foo, uh, you should run a Google search called for grid foo, a practical manual. Let's see, can I right click? No. I thought there was a reconnect to lost drones option, but I guess not. Shortcuts. Ah, yes, there is, but I have to key bind it. All right, right click. Scoop to drone bay, right click, scoop to drone bay, right click, scoop to drone bay. There, that problem is fixed. Alright, let me go back on my original vector. So I hold down Alt so I can see my own bracket, line up the station bracket with it, double click, left click in that direction, and hope that's the undock vector. Okay. So yeah, some uh, grid is a volume of space where the game believes that uncloaked objects should be able to see each other. Uh, so I've crossed a grid wall uh, so I can no longer see the traffic around the station. Plus, I should not be crossing the grid wall 100 kilometers away from the station. That should happen at 350 kilometers at least, so somebody is definitely manipulating the grids out here. But anyway, I digress. Uh, suffice it to say, uh, drones are flying turrets. I can launch them from my ship. I can tell them to go attack a, t uh, to a, go attack a target. Uh, that being said, this ship also has turret hardpoints and launcher hardpoints. Three of each. It's got six high slots, but I can't shove six guns on here, nor six missile launchers. All right. So I've got three launchers and three guns on here. I'll explain my choice of weapons in further detail in a moment. Uh, my, mids, uh, my mid slots consist of an afterburner and a stasis weapon fire. The low slots are a small armor repairer and three drone damage amplifiers. What the drone damage amplifiers do is that they increase the amount of damage that my drones deal out. So with three drone damage amplifiers, I uh, moderately increase the damage done by my, by my drones. This in combination with the ship's inherent bonuses to drone damage uh, will make the damage for my drones rather significant. Uh, you can see an estimate of the total amount of pre-resistance damage done by my various weapon systems. Half of it comes from the drones, with the other half being split between turrets and missiles. 
This setup is not capacitor stable. I cannot run all modules at the same time. However, only three modules on this fit use capacitor. Uh, the small armor repair, the afterburner, and the stasis webifier. By far, the biggest hog here is the small armor repairer. It's going to eat 40 gigajoules every 5.4 seconds that I have it running. So if I'm not taking armor damage, uh, or if I'm not taking enough armor damage, I should not be using the small armor repairer. As long as the small armor repairer is inactive, it's not eating capacitor energy, there's enough capacitor energy left over for the afterburner and the stasis webifier. I decided to get a couple of rigs, small proce processor overclocking unit ones. These increase the amount of central processing unit on my ship so that I can fit more modules on here. Without these two rigs and my current skills, I cannot f uh, online this third drone damage amplifier. I don't normally advise using CPU rigs or power grid rigs on combat vessels. There's usually better choices you can put in those rig slots uh, to improve performance and to make up for the power grid or CPU issues, you just use uh, similar modules that use less power grid or less capacitor. For example, fit smaller guns rather than the biggest guns you can get for your ship. Um, that being said, uh, my budget is limited. I have not taken any money from my main character, my main character having a hell of a lot more than 3 million interstellar credits. But for demonstration purposes, I've been self-sufficient on this character, so I haven't, um, so my budget is a little limited. Uh, the small, uh, processor overclocking unit ones were inexpensive in the Amara solar system. Uh, even here in Essence, uh, in Arnon, it's, they're only running about 100,000 interstellar credits each. The other rigs that I found on the market that might be useful to my ship were all more expensive. So that brings us back to the details of the weapons. So the three turrets are autocannons. These are short-range projectile weapons. Uh, the launchers are rocket launchers rather than missile launchers. So uh, for frigate-sized weapons, the rocket launchers are the shorter-range weapon system. The missiles are the longer-range weapon system. Uh, missiles of all types never use capacitor energy to fire. Lasers use a significant amount of capacitor energy to fire. Hybrid, uh, yeah, lasers use a significant amount of capacitor energy, uh, but only require frequency crystals, and Tech 1 crystals never shatter. Again, Tech 1 frequency crystals will last as long as your ship does, and if they survive in the wreckage of your ship, they will last even longer than your ship does. Uh, Hybrid weapons, typically used by the Galente and the Caldari. Uh, Railguns are the long range, blasters are the short range for the hybrids. They require some capacitor energy, but also require charges that are expended. Whereas the projectiles only require charges that are expended, uh, but do not use capacitor energy. My capacitor could be completely empty, and I could be neutralized out the wazoo, and I can still fire my projectiles and my missiles. My weapons will not require capacitor energy. Incidentally, drones themselves also do not use your ship's capacitor. So all of my weapon systems can keep firing even if I'm capacitor neutralized uh, to all hell. Uh, besides that, uh, lasers always do some mixture of EM and thermal damage, unless you're using the longest range radio crystals. So radio crystals only deal th EM damage. Hybrids only deal kinetic and thermal damage. The Tech 1 ammunitions for projectiles, however, deal a mixture of damage types. Uh, EMP is, uh, is EM and explosive. EM mostly, with a little bit of explosive and kinetic. Uh, fusion is explosive kinetic, and phase plasma is thermal kinetic. 
So I can change my damage types on the projectiles. I can also change my damage types on the missiles. So Inferno for Thermal, Mjolnir for EM, Nova for Explosive, Scourge for Kinetic. For missiles, these are the names assigned to the different damage types. Inferno is always Thermal, Mjolnir is always EM, Nova is always Explosive, Scourge is always Kinetic. Uh, if you're returning to EVE Online from a long absence, you probably wouldn't be watching this particular video series anyway, but yes, this is a change. There's no more Cataclysm cruise missiles or Foxfire rockets. All missiles now use one of these four names depending upon their damage type. So, generally speaking, I will be relying on drones to deal damage most of the time. Uh, my drones, will, uh, given my current skills, can attack targets up to 25 kilometers away, uh, and they can do a significant amount of damage doing that. If, for whatever reason, I'm dealing with a tougher target, I would have to get in close, uh, within 5 kilometers for my guns, within 4 kilometers for my missiles, in order to apply the damage from my high slot modules. But if I do get in close, I can double the amount of damage I'm doing to a target. Uh, for tank, I only have the armor repairer. I've got nothing here that increases the resistances on my armor layer. So if I'm getting smacked with a lot of explosive or kinetic damage, my small armor repairer is going to have a, an extremely hard time keeping up with that. And depending upon the amount of incoming damage, it may be impossible. I have not set aside any CPU or any slots for resistance modules, such as armor explosive hardeners, armor kinetic hardeners, armor thermal hardeners, and the like. So whatever the resistances are on my armor layer, those are the resistances on my armor layer. Uh, for every 1,000 points of each uh, given damage type, I would take off uh, 500 if it were EM, uh, I'll suffer 500 if it were EM, I'll suffer 650 if it were thermal, I'll suffer 750 if it were kinetic, I'll suffer 800 if it were explosive. For every 1,000 points of damage dealt to me, depending upon what damage type it is. So, generally speaking, for most situations, my strategy is get within 25 kilometers, let the drones do the work. Uh, once I get another level of two of drone avionics, that will increase to about 35 kilometers. If it's a very tough target, I'm going to have to get in close and kill it fast before it kills me. With the afterburner, I can get in close rather quickly. Well, somewhat quickly. Uh, I go 276 meters per second without the afterburner, 504 meters per second with the afterburner. Uh, I could try to change the fit to use a micro warp drive instead, uh, but in that case, I'm definitely only using the micro warp drive to cover a lot of distance quickly. I'm not going to orbit a target with a micro warp drive running. Uh, the micro warp drive is going to use more power grid. I have power grid to spare. The micro warp drive is going to use more CPU. I'm going to have to rearrange the fit somehow. Uh, the stasis webifier uses 25 teraflops, I might have to swap that out for a cap recharger, which uses fewer teraflops. That might hopefully make the difference, but I'll have to play around with it. Uh, so, that's the ship fitting. That's what I've been doing since How to Survive EVE Online. Uh, for, uh, what I have trained up, set up in my skill queue, Various levels of small projectile turret, evasive maneuvering, missile launcher operation, gunnery, uh, rapid firing, acceleration control, fuel conservation, warp drive operation, acceleration control, uh, high speed maneuvering, and then I'm going to train drones level 5 at some point. So yeah, that's the strategy. Try to let the drones do the work. Uh, stay uh, about 20 kilometers out. If I have to get in close to kill something quickly, it's risky, but I can do it. So that's the idea here. And given... Normally I don't like to lay out an instant on Dock Bookmark at only 450 kilometers. 
but let me add this undock and this is Arnon 9 Moon 3 Sisters of Eve and kilometers zero four about 470 kilometers all right Hopefully that'll work. Alright. That is the prologue. This is the prologue episode. That pretty much brings you up to speed with what I've been doing since How to Survive EVE Online. And how I'm set up to proceed going forward. Uh, this is a reasonable fit. It is a gank fit. Glass cannon. I'm taking risks here. Docking permission requested. But it should work. We shall see. So the next episode will be episode one of the Bloodstained Stars. In the meantime, thank you for watching.